welcome welcome great that you're here in the miracle mind today in a special edition <laughs> so it's like uh, amazing the occurrence that you're taking part in it's an amazing occurrence and i'm so happy that you joined today in this um, so you can be fully aware of what actually is going on in you how great is that it's like you have no idea the immensity of this occurrence in you that we call an awakening rebirth um, resurrection it's actually occurring it's actually happening say so the the former earth has passed away and there's a new world say appearing on the horizon and and this is not a world based on past or future but it is an it is an say shift in consciousness that is taking place in such a way that you could never imagine anything like that see and you are a whole part of that you're completely involved in this and it's actually happening in you uh, as as the one occurrence it's happening in you so that's that's really great to even say grasp a little bit of the immensity of the occurrence altogether so and at the same time it has nothing to do with your personal involvement in the sense of your personality involvement or anything now this is literally like uh, if there's such a thing as a veil the veil is is just being ripped open and you're actually allowing that light to come into your consciousness so it's like it is wow yeah you didn't plan it this way but it's actually happening and that is that is the occurrence that is taking place in you this this should not have occurred in in the next 2000 years but it's actually happening in you now that is the great thing that is uh, that is offered and you accept it so that's that's amazing and um so allowing that to sink in and to integrate into yourself um, I don't know how to do that but I know this it's like just allow the changes that are occurring to, to move through your system no matter whether that seems to be a good thing or a bad thing or uh, yeah who knows with what symptoms it will come it doesn't matter it really does not matter and uh, because it's it's all like um, say dissipating all the all the symptoms are dissipating all the differences are say dissipating uh, are literally disappearing as we speak so this is like a sun shining through the fog suddenly first there was a thick fog and that becomes thinner and thinner suddenly you see the light shine right through that and and you just got a glimpse of that it's like the light is shining right through the fog of ignorance and um, that is a real occurrence in you it is not just an imagination at all it's like it's a real occurrence and it's happening in you and it's happening right now now just let that occur and and you will yeah you'll you will see that the recognition that you have will be so familiar to you on a scale that you haven't had as a human being like you never felt this much at home in yourself as a human being you always saw that this isn't it this isn't it and this is not what it's supposed to look like why why am i here why am i doing this and now by this say crack in the veil uh, you see that the light recognition that you have the opening of that in you is so strong that you you can't deny it for one thing but when you start to receive it it is so so familiar to you that you don't know what to do with yourself but say praise praise god and and give it back to God um, being in this love relationship as the only thing that there is and and that is so great so however you can express that 
allow that to be expressed through you. And it doesn't matter how that looks. Um, so today with, um, can you hear this? Because that's in fact the episode that we're in. It's like, can you hear this? Uh, Master teacher will talk about the veil too. And uh, we also will read in the manual for teachers in uh, what is the real meaning of sacrifice. Um, just another say paragraph uh, to to make sure that there's nothing left of this sacrifice, but you actually are able to look at it in a way that will say involve a release of any kind of restriction. So you can see it's like all the activities that were I say letting take place within us all have to do with the release of your self-identity, with the release of the constriction that you found yourself in, with the release of any kind of, say, uh, consideration about yourself. Like all of that is, is going to, say, be released and making space in your consciousness for light and love and, and a recognition of your true source and the one purpose. Now that seems to be big words, but it's like the, these words don't even express it at all. Uh, so it, this is really pointing at your individual express, yeah, experience, expression. Uh, you, you actually are bringing together opposites that you thought existed. They are being brought into one and in that you actually start to create um, and and this is a real life occurrence so that yeah that is it's all understated is what i'm saying it's like even though it sounds great it is it's totally understated it it doesn't cover it at all what i'm trying to express now that is something else Okay, so here, A6 we did, we did the other day, and so here's A7. Do not forget that sacrifice is total. There is no half sacrifices. You cannot give up heaven partially. You cannot be a little bit in hell. It's like there's no measure involved in this. We, I think we said this before, but I, it doesn't matter. You cannot be a little bit in hell. The word of God has no exceptions. And it is this that makes it holy and beyond the world, because the world is all exceptions and measures and all of this. It's like, no, there's no measure involved here at all. You're either in heaven or you're not. You're either in your Christ uh, experience or you're not. You're either in heaven or you're in hell. You're even totally guilty or you're, or you're innocent. <laughs> it is this that makes it holy and beyond the world. It is its holiness that points to God. It is its holiness that makes you safe. It is denied if you attack any brother for anything. So it is its holiness that makes you safe. It is denied if you attack your brother for anything. For it is here the split with God occurs. A split that is impossible, a split that cannot happen, yet a split in which you surely will believe because you have set up a situation that is impossible. So fear creates a situation that's impossible look at the world it's like that's literally impossible all all the things that come from fear create a situation that is impossible so that's good to know and to read a split that is impossible a split that cannot happen yet a split which you surely will believe because you have set up a situation that is impossible and in this situation the impossible can seem to happen it seems to have the sacrifice of truth, which can never be sacrificed, of course not. Teacher of God, do not forget the meaning of sac this, do not forget the meaning of sacrifice and remember 
um, coming back here. And remember, what each decision you make must mean in terms of cost. Decide for God, everything is given you at no cost at all. Decide for God and everything you giving you at no cost at all. Decide against him and you choose nothing at the expense of everything. What would you teach? Remember only what you would learn. For it is here that your concern should be. Atonement is for you. Your learning claims it and your learning gives it. The world contains it not, but learn this course and it is yours. God holds out his word to you, for he has need of teachers. What other way is there to save his son? Okay, so teacher of God, do not forget the meaning of sacrifice and remember that each decision you make must mean what each, each, sorry, what each decision you make must mean in terms of cost. Decide for God. Everything is given you at no cost at all. Decide against God and you choose nothing at the expense of the awareness of everything. What would you teach? Remember only what you would learn. So this is what you teach. You teach only what you would remember to learn. For it is here that your concern should be. Atonement is for you. Your learning claims it. And your learning gives it. Like if you hear it, what this says. If you can hear this, what this says. If you actually are open to receive this for yourself. That's where it happens for you. This is what you give, this is what you teach, this is what you demonstrate. The world contains it not, but learn this course and it is yours. God holds out his word to you and he has need of teachers. It's like you are God's voice in your world. You are God's voice. <clears throat> How can his son be reached or saved? It's like by you, by you, say, bringing this into your dream, by you allowing the light to be experienced in your dream, by you extending this light to everyone. And to not attack your brother, because in that, we saw this here too, it's like in that, in your attacking your brother, you just lose the awareness of everything because suddenly you're in a war set up so that is that is really good to know like something happens when you start to attack you lose the awareness of love's presence so that's that's why that is so destructive for your own awareness not for anyone else's for your own awareness and, and you miss completely, like, your, your uh, rightful place in the universe. You miss it completely, because you're, you're actually denying that you have that place. And that is just not, I say, that doesn't give you anything. You, you just lost the awareness of love's presence. That is all. Now you remember again, like, ah, oh, God, no, I didn't lose it. Oh, I'm so happy. Oh, I forgive my brother because I don't want to attack him. I don't want to lose what is rightfully mine. I don't want to lose that. So it's, it's right here. It's with me. I can receive it. And the only thing I don't do is attacking my brother. See, <clears throat> the attacking my brother is really, this part is like... Um, looking for differences, looking for exceptions. And the differences is probably the most clear to, to use here. If you look for differences, you will always be able to find them. But if you look for uh, that what connects, that what is the same, for the sameness in everything, then you see that there's no uh, difference between your brother and yourself. So you look for equality instead of differences. 
And that is really the the function of the Holy Spirit, you could say. It is like looking for equality, because this this lives by equality. There's only one sun, and it's in perfect communication with its creator. So it, how, what would there be to conflict? What would there be to, to have an exception? What would there be as a difference? You could say like the, the expression of love is the recognition of equality. And Jesus says this many times in, in the sense of um, um, it's like love your brother as yourself. Because in fact, he is yourself. There's no difference. It's like you're, you're a son of God. God created you as well as your brother. Perfect. There's no difference. The differences were, say, imagined after that by looking for them, by looking for ways to prove the separation, which really is like started with fear. So it's like fear creates situations that aren't real. It's like it's an imagined uh, situation. It's an imagined world based on fear and, and it has no meaning and has nothing to itself. So you have to look for meaning and <clears throat> if you find meaning in differences, um, you can be busy for a long time, that's for one thing. But it's like you have to keep proving the differences, otherwise you collapse into the equality. You know what I'm saying? That's why I say a release, release the self-identity, release the ideas that you hold about yourself because that's the only thing you need to do. If you don't defend yourself, if you're not protecting yourself, if you allow yourself to be vulnerable, you say drop into an experience of equality, of the sameness, the say, yeah, the common sense, the reason you could say, the reason you, you fall into reason, which, which doesn't see differences. So that is really lovely. Well, we see this in chapter 22 too. That is the chapter of today. It's, it's all about reason. In fact, it's like reason is then the idea, uh, not as we can reason with our minds, but more like <clears throat> that what makes perfect sense, um, say derived from reality itself, the recognition of equality, for instance. But we will not go into chapter 22. So now the next thing that we're going to do is uh, listen to Master Teacher. Are you afraid to do that? Well, yeah, because you associate, obviously, you're afraid to die. Can you do it? Sure. I'm here to tell you that you can part the veil. In fact, in this quadrant, the veil is open. It got opened inadvertently. It got opened a little early. Do you understand that the plan of atonement is totally flexible? Can you hear this? If you think it's screwed up here, you ought to see the order room right up in here. See, you th there's only just a master plan. There's only just a single whole plan. Everything else is pure chance. Does anybody hear me when I talk like that? It has to be pure chance because nothing can be planned. I'm teaching you that everything is 100% chance. That's how you can be sure it's okay. Yes. I want you to become chaotic, totally chaotic in your associations. Come on. Do you think that God orders his thoughts? <laughs> well, you laugh at that, but God doesn't order anything. God is perfect order. Crap. God is perfect chaos. If each moment is only a whole moment, how the hell would you put them together? All you'd have is a split in the moments, guys. That's what I'm telling you. Now you're going to have to do what? Order the moments. Do you hear me? You're almost hearing me. This is so fundamental. I'll open up the book and read it to you. And you'll go, hmm. Why? You got your moments sequenced. So many places in the Course, Jesus says, you're always bringing to the situation your past. Yet the past is gone and has absolutely nothing to do 
with what you are now, unless what? Unless you ha let it have everything to do with it. Okay, that's forgiveness, isn't it? If you don't, if you let your past have everything to do with it, that's the atonement, all right? Your future then must have everything to do with it because your past and the future are really the same thing. Now you brought your past and your future together and you simply begin to create. You got a perfect reflection of your own thought forms. That's it. That was what I was waiting for. Is that you? So, sometimes in, in the association, if you'd like to think of this as you fell into a well, Jesus says you're occupying a very, very tiny spot, okay? Only you know about this, and it's like we're just going to take the manhole cover off of it. This is how simple this could be for you. Okay. It might help you, as I said last week, to think of the sky as paper mache. Can you hear this at all? I'm going to try it. The sky is paper mache. Okay, and there's little pen light cells being shined through, and you're in a cigar box. <laughs> there aren't millions and trillions of stars a thousand million miles away from you. That's poop. Jesus says, if you reach your hand up, you can reach right through to the very furthest one, and you can just pluck it down and look at it. There, see? Got him. This is called swatting earths. See, all it is is just your own association. It's very little, and it only lasted a second, and it's gone. Now, will that help you in your own dilemma? It'll help you immeasurably in your own dilemma. Why? It's true. And I'm in your dream telling it it's true, and if you'll admit that you want this to be so, it will become so. It cannot not because you have just as much power of mind to assert it as you do to deny it. Come on. But what have you admitted? That the power is in you. This is the best talk ever given on the planet. It's a good talk. Why? Maybe some of you are beginning to hear it reasonably. Not in a comparison of your associate thoughts about it, but by the whole premise that what I'm telling you about eternity, singularity, and reality is finally very reasonable. And that what you're doing in your own death associations is not reasonable. It's not fair. It's not just. And God is fair and just and whole and beautiful. And this is not, therefore, this is not real. See how we look here. Now you got all this churning going on in your perceptions, see? What are we doing? Well, we're stirring up all of your past frames of reference. And you're looking to grab a hold of something that will allow you what? Not to go through the transcendence. <laughs> Why? Because this is the last thing you want to do. You can say, boy, I can hardly wait to do it. Not true. You can do it now. And that's what you're going to demonstrate. It's very important that you remember that it has nothing to do with the guy sitting next to you. Nothing. You're going to maintain it does and you'll be wrong. Okay. And that includes what apparently is his illumination. You'll look at him and say, gee, teacher, I sure wish I could do that. Uh, I'd be illuminated like you. You're a real master teacher. <laughs> you can hardly wait to attack me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You are attacking me just by judging that I am and you're not. It's the fact that I am that allows you to be, for goodness sake. Yeah. Huh? Got it? Boy, of course, in miracles is beautiful. Your brother's your savior, literally. Do we allow that I'm a step ahead of you in time? But only as you have directed me. I already know who I am, guys. I'm the same as everyone. It's you that's trying to be different. See, reality is going to be reality no matter what you do in your own dream. How come I got this assignment to wake you up? How the hell do I know? <laughs> My waking minds hear that. How the hell do I know? I'm just here doing it, right? It must be that this is what I do. 
One thing I know for sure, this is all I do. You do a lot of other things, but I'm telling you, you only have to do this. And you must do this in order to be this. Okay. Let's have a little quiet time here. I'm just looking at this thing going on over in uh, over in uh, the Gulf, just a minute. You say, well, how come you participate in that? And I, I say, I participate in everything. It's hard for me to teach that. Remember that in your mind, if you repair a sparrow's wing, you've repaired the universe. It's hard to teach this. See, a whole mind does everything wholly. You say, well, aren't you admitting to the conflict of the war? Yeah, I'm admitting to this conflict. But remember, the conflict is singular to me. And in, in the, I can't teach that. Mm. See, mm. sometimes it's necessary for there to be conflict, isn't there? For there to be solution. Mm -hmm. Because uh, as Jesus would teach it, peace is not truce. Okay. If the conflict is contained within the subject, it has to be in the object, and that's the necessity. The, the Christ face is not a congeniality of anti-Christhood. Okay, it's not get, it's not anti-Christ getting together and defining the Christ. That's just a truce. Obviously, you've brought those perceptions to eventually attack yourself in relationship with yourself. It cannot not be so. In other words, anti is anti. Only you can be opposed to the truth. Sir, could you relate this idea of conflict to the Persian Gulf War? Uh-huh. That's what and I just how did. We caused it and how I can... The only reason you caused it is you caused all of this. If you segregate it, you're going to have problems in the magic attempting to overcome it. You've allowed for that sickness rather than the 20,000 people that died last night. I just told you that. You're saying to me the Persian Gulf is more important than the people starving in Ethiopia. You're wrong. Remember that you've constructed the whole thing in the unreality of your determination to find yourself in your own death associations. You have a tendency to make death explicit. I know you do that. And I know that you mourn for something specifically dead in your own relationship. Okay, don't you? Why don't you mourn for everything? Why don't you mourn for every baby that ever died or lost it? Why do you take a specific case of an example of what's constituted as evil in your mind and attempt to bring it to remedy by your limited associations? Now, does that make me a pacifist? It has nothing to do with pacificity. All pacifism in perceptual relationships is sociological. It cannot not be. Can you hear me? Okay, the idea of peace is always in the mind connected to the idea of war. My idea of peace is not connected to war at all. Okay, that's the step out of the conflict that's necessary for the atonement of your own mind. Are you the cause of the war? Yes, but only because you're the cause of everything. You're attempting to discern the relationship between good and evil in this situation. I know it's a tough step. Why? Because you don't want there to be the pain, and when you feel the pain, you have a tendency to give it more immediate direction. Okay. When you don't want to feel the pain, you've subtracted it in your own memory and pasted it out among the people starving in Ethiopia. It's amazing how the mind really finally is not concerned about death except it comes directly into their own associations. Okay. On page five of the uh, San Francisco Examiner will be uh, 800 people trampled to death at a shrine in India. On the front page will be one little girl stuck in a well. You see, you see well, you're directly concerned about that. Okay, remember, if you're the cause of it, if it remains real, you can never heal it. Yes. Now, does this make you not participate in what's going on in the world? Hell no. Do anything you want with it. What I want to do is bring you into a new association with your con inherent conflict. And that's the certainty that if any of this is real, you've got a bad problem. And that includes this. So I have no solution to that except to tell you that God is only love. 
and that if you define sickness and death in your association, you are not love and therefore not real. And I don't want to take away from you the pain that you're feeling for what's going on in the Gulf. In fact, I want you to feel the intensity of it. Then perhaps you can feel the actual intensity of what's happening to your brother and you won't be able to stand it because that's how I got this. I can't stand the idea that those young guys are getting killed over there. Now you ask me, what can I do about it? I'll do anything you ask me to do about it, but I still can't solve it. Jesus says, all around you, these terrible things are happening. You overcome this, this happens, you overcome that. Why? You're holding together that tensions of those thoughts in your own mind. But remember, finally, that the solution is that the conflict is only in you. If you want to know the exact difference that Jesus would teach, it's this. I'm trying to get you to serve God rather than man. I know you don't like it somewhere. Okay, it's the same notation as good works avail you nothing. And it's very difficult for you to see that. Somehow inherently you want to say, yes, I can do good works. Then I would say to you that good works avail you everything, but you won't accept that. You want good works to avail you in the limited association of your own mind. My admonition to you is to serve only God because that's what you are. Your service to man is service to evil. That has to be true, because you have constructed the sickness outside of you. Everybody agree? I know you don't like this, but you might as well look at it. My Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Master Teacher, for sharing. That's so great. So, so many things are coming our way now, in, even in this 15-minute talk. You know, it's like so much is is cleared up in fact that you don't know where to start uh, how to deal with this or how to look at anything and how to organize it in your mind and all all the things that you normally would do with with information now this is exactly the point where where we were brought to that it's like god is not organizing this god is not organizing his thoughts now this is this is pure chaos and um, so one thing that master teacher says is, is this is like leave it there leave say allow yourself to stay with that not not to organize it not to think like okay now in the next situation blah 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 my response will be do 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 and and this is what my new attitude should be like no that's not how it works because um, you're you're dealing here with different say levels of experience and um, the thing that uh, that is being offered here is even though it is say uh, pure chaos it doesn't mean uh, that it isn't say perfect no it's it's a perfect chaos that means anything can happen at any time it's like you know, in terms of probability it becomes more obvious uh, ob obviously beneficial so in terms of possibilities you see that just allow this to to be as it is and this too and this too like it's it's more related to your receptiveness and openness than anything else you don't have to do anything else with this no this is this is like uh, say to, to stay away from organizing this in your mind and trying to say make a deduction or like coming to a conclusion of some kind leave that behind because that does not make any sense now what is the great thing then about leaving this in chaos you could say why why is that so great to do it this way is in fact that you are not determining what experience you will have like this is out of your league of control this has nothing to do with your control or your formulation that's why it's so great now here master teacher gives us a couple of uh, directions one of them is this it's like uh, instead of making things specific like okay the israeli uh, hamas war God, that's going on for instance eh? like uh, to keep it actual or the um, so many people died in ethiopia is still going on probably 
And um, so you want to make things specific, not recognizing that your whole dream is based on death and, and limitation and restriction. So you want to make it very specific in your mind to, to point your finger at like, look at that, what's happening here. And we should do something about that and about this and all of that. So you don't want a solution. In other words, you're just busy trying to say, put it out there in a certain way, instead of recognizing it, um, the nature of the dream that you're in which is which is death and you know this this dream is based on death now in our awakening this all is going to be used in a whole different way uh, obviously because this is one of the main things that you're bumping up against and that is the pain that you feel uh, in relationship with your brother so he says now too in this talk it's like yes i want you to feel the the intensity of the pain of exactly what is going on turn on the news and actually take a good look at what is occurring and feel the pain so allow yourself to be open to the pain that you're actually feeling for the occurrences that are taking place not to make it real but to actually discover the nature of this dream uh, it is a dream of limitation and of attack and of, uh, say, uh, differences. Now make that total and allow yourself to, that your whole world might collapse into it, that you don't feel like holding on to this at all any longer. Then something happens. So that's one thing. But see, it's all based on you live in, in an, say, definition of yourself. This definition is crumbling, is falling apart. You, you, if you don't hold it together, there's, there's an alternative available. It will be the last thing that you do because you prevent yourself from letting that occur, obviously, because that is what a human being does. That is what you do in your limited uh, perspective and your limited ideas about yourself. But if you come to the place where that actually is occurring, then something can happen and something will be changing. Now, now this is um, where we're heading to. So like I said in the beginning, it's like the veil is opening. Um, apparently, this wasn't, this wasn't scheduled yet, but it's, it's a chaos. <laughs> it's a chaos in the upper room. Anything can happen at any time. There's an say, atonement plan, but it is perfectly chaotic. So that doesn't mean that uh, things are not occurring in the right time. No, there's a perfect synchronicity at the same time too, but it's not planned. It is, it is just the way that falls into place. That is so perfect. So that's pretty abstract to talk like this, but it's actually interesting because you recognize it uh, to be to be true um, uh, in your experience of yourself. You see more and more of it and actually see it at work. Now, the freedom of not organizing your thoughts to come back to that, the freedom of not organizing your thoughts as the uh, as you are used to offers you say a new experience and we have we have said this before but it's like it offers you a new experience because the whole control part is gone like the control room is nobody's in there there's nobody ruling that anymore so that means that you're open to experience uh, a new experience of yourself you recognize that there is no sense in ordering all of this Okay, so I um, so I made some sheets with some expressions that we heard in the beginning of this talk, and I just want to say share that with you to use it as a as a basis for um, for further yeah teaching, because I was interested in one word, and and that is create. bringing the opposites together you simply begin to create like bringing the opposites together of of uh, 
death and life, for instance. Oh, now, uh, here was the example of past and future. Actually, seeing that it's the same thing, you simply begin to create. Now, that's that's interesting. So, I want to go deeper into that. Know ye not, you must be born again. We have heard this many times said by Jesus. Know ye not, you must be born again. Are you afraid to do that? Yes, because obviously you're afraid to die. Can you do it? Sure. Can you be born again? Yeah, sure. I'm here to tell you that you can part the veil. In fact, in this quadrant, the veil is opened. It opened inadvertently. It got opened a little early. Do you understand that the plan of atonement is totally flexible? And this to me is an incredible expression. It's like, yes, I do recognize that. And it feels so good. Like, do you understand that the plan of atonement is totally flexible? It is not a law forced upon you. No, it's completely um, flexible. It is so flexible that it's say it's only it only can be received by your complete openness, and then it will work. Like there's nothing forced upon you. It is completely received whenever you want it. That's how this works. Can you hear that? If you think it's screwed up here in this world, you ought to see the order room right up here in here. See, there's only just a master plan. There's only just a single whole plan. Everything else is pure chance. That does make sense to like a single whole plan. Yes, absolutely. Perfect plan of atonement. But the way that is going to be implemented into your consciousness that is actually working your consciousness is by pure chance. It has to be pure chance because it, nothing can be planned. I'm teaching you that everything is a hundred percent chance. That's how you can be sure it's okay. I want you to become totally chaotic in your associations. Do you think that God orders his thoughts? Well, you laugh about that, but God doesn't order anything. God is, God is perfect order? Crap. God is perfect chaos. If each moment is only a whole moment, how the hell would you put them together? See, every moment is a whole moment. It has not separate parts, so it doesn't need to be put together. It doesn't need to be ordered. Every moment is whole and perfect. All you'd have is a split in the moment, guys. That's what I'm telling you. You're now going to have to do what? Order the moments. Do you hear me? It's like that's what you automatically start to do in order to to not completely dive into this, you're actually organizing it for yourself. You're almost hearing me. This is so fundamental. I'll open up the book and read it to you and you'll go, hmm, you've got your moment sequenced. At so many places in the Course, Jesus says, you're always bringing to the situation your past. The past is gone and has obviously nothing, absolutely nothing to do with what you are now, unless you let it have everything to do with it. That is forgiveness, isn't it? It's like this is the same thing. Like you don't want the past to influence this moment, right? So that's, that can be your, say, new attitude. I'm not going to let the past influence this moment. And here then Master Teacher says, well, let it have everything to do with this moment. That would, be, that would be great too. It's like, that's the same idea. That's forgiveness. It's like, I'm not protecting myself or separating myself off of anything. No, I'll include it in completely, not having any defense against it. 
now it can be whole again. So we start to come into bringing the opposites together. This is in fact what I'm sharing. If you let your past have everything to do with it, that's the atonement. Your future then must have everything to do with it too, because your past and the future are really the same thing. Now you've brought your past and your future together, and you simply begin to create. Why? You've got a perfect reflection of your own thought forms. Okay, so you see, the, bringing the opposites together, that's what I want to dive into a little bit, because it's, it is what we share too, about the idea of war and about death. Like if you turn on the news now, you're actually going to very specifically look at what is going on and let that affect you, and then you're not, uh, say, denying it. No, you're also not making it real, but it, it, you, let, you don't defend yourself from the occurrence itself. So you can say, like, you let your, just let your pain be total. You, you see the, say, incredible, uh, yeah, painful things. You see the occurrences that are taking place, but you also make, are not looking for differences of any kind. You see the nature of the dream for what it is. And you see that a little bit of pain in your own, say, dream close to you or happening inside yourself is not any different than people starving to death in Ethiopia. Like that is the same idea. Now, that recognition is really important because you, in fact, uh, recognize yourself as the source of what you see not to make it real or make it factual, make it as a fact for you, as in reality, but in fact, um, allowing yourself to transcend out of it, to, to actually forgive this, to let it be healed and to, uh, say, transcend above it. Seeing that it has nothing to do with how you were created, but only had to do with the definition of yourself. So in this definition, <laughs> definition of yourself, you include everything in that you see. You know what I'm saying? This is what I mean. So like you include everything in, but it doesn't make you that. No, you actually see that that was just the definition you had about yourself. Now, there's no need for defining yourself. So like you're perfectly defined by God, perfectly created by God. And that doesn't need any ordering either. That doesn't need a description or characteristics or anything. Like, no, that allow that to be totally chaotic. And allow that to be whole in every moment. But don't think that what the moment that just happened has anything to do with what is happening now. Now, there's a real... Uh, say, fundamental transformational segment in it that you're going to discover. Because not using your past experience of uh, the perfect moment, bringing that back into this moment, thinking that you need to look for the same, uh, would be the same mistake. It's like then you're still bringing the past back into this moment. Not necessary. So allow this to be totally chaotic in that sense. Allow every moment to be totally chaotic. Not having any kind of sense of ordering it or looking for differences or giving it descriptions or uh, say looking for characteristics that, that makes this moment so amazing. No, let it just be. So there's, there's a really deep, a really deep lesson to learn here. It's like, that is so amazing. But y you see in what I'm sharing with you, you recognize the truth in that. And it makes total sense. And that is so amazing to hear that. So whether Master Teacher is sharing that in this way that he did, or whether you hear me say that, and, and it is still the same thing in that sense. It's like, the recognition of truth is universal. So that, that, yeah, let that occur. Let that occur. Be open to that. That's the only requirement. 
all right well that is wonderful um see how we're doing oh we're doing good <laughs> um yeah i actually want to go to the um, special prayers um just br bringing that in i'm going to share the screen with you in a second yeah either one of those it's like both are so great but two three three i'm reading to you or praying with you it's a miracle prayer i give my life to god to run today father I give you all my thoughts today. I would have none of mine. In place of them, give me your own. I give you all my acts as well, that I may do your will instead of seeking goals which cannot be obtained and wasting time in vain imaginings. Today I come to you I will step back and merely follow you. Be you the guide and I the follower who questions not the wisdom of the infinite, nor love whose tenderness I cannot comprehend, but which is yet your perfect gift to me. Today we have one guide to lead us on, and as we walk together, we will give this day to him with no reserve at all. This is his day, and so it is a day of countless gifts and mercies unto us. I give my life to God to run today. Father, I give you all my thoughts today. I would have none of mine. In place of them, Give me your own. I give you all my acts as well, that I may do your will instead of seeking goals which cannot be obtained and wasting time in vain imaginings. Today I come to you. I will step back and merely follow you. Be you the guide and I the follower who questions not the wisdom of the infinite, nor love whose tenderness I cannot comprehend, but which is yet your perfect gift to me. Amen. All right, so this was, the, say, the warming up for the day. Um, so great. Thank you so much for joining me today. And... Um, so today, later in the day, we will have an... Now I'm organizing my thoughts, I'm aware of that. Like uh, at uh, 3 a p.m. Uh, Central European time, which is like noon Central Daylight Saving Time USA, we will have our meeting uh, Rebirth with Joel, which is at uh, 7 a.m what was it 7 a.m pacific daylight saving time usa and uh, rebirth with joel will be a continuation of where we uh, where we are now and the same recognition so thank you so much for your part in this and have a wonderful rest of your night or wonderful day and see you soon thank you so much